My name is Paul Coffey. Uh, now, I'm the production director of a company called Coast Digital. We're a digital marketing agency. We're based in Stanway. Uh, and the bit of the business that I work in and Michael works in as well is that we deliver assets, websites, landing pages, whatever they might be. Uh, and quite a large part of what we do, Michael is going to talk about today. It's called UX Design. Now, um, if being the production director of Coast isn't enough to put my blood pressure absolutely through the roof, and it is, on a semi-regular basis, it is, um, I'm also, uh, also volunteered on a, uh, 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 on a board that the Counter Council run called the Employment and Skills Board. And for that, I am the sector lead for IT, digital, and creative. Now, the talk that we're doing today is the first of a series that we're hoping to do uh, over the course of the next six months. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to lift the lid on industry on some hot topic uh, disciplines and some hot topic activities that we run and try to show our colleagues in education exactly what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So look, I'm here today to talk about UX design, uh, what it means to me, what it means to other people, try and demystify some of the terms around it, and hopefully give you a flavour of how it fits in to the design process. UX stands for user experience. So a lot of people think that design is about fonts, colors, graphics, illustrations, really beautiful looking pages with nice graphics, colors, all looks really attractive. And that kind of is what design is, but it's only one layer, it's the visual layer. And there's so much more depth to it than that. Um, there's a famous quote from Steve Jobs, and he said, design is not what it looks like. Design is how it works. And really, design is not about visuals as much as it is problem solving. Every day, when we work with clients and users, what we're really trying to do is understand their problems and how to really solve them. And with that in mind, kind of anyone can be a designer. But really, if you've solved a problem in the past, then you've designed something. Um, it's not always about fonts and colors. So to me, user experience design is an education process where we make decisions based all around the user. So go through phases of research, design, adaptation, measure, and planning. So the other thing about user experience is it has to convert. And it's kind of this sweet spot where user needs and business needs overlap. Because really importantly, there is no point in having a product that people love if it doesn't help a business to achieve its goals. Websites and digital products can be really expensive to make, so if they don't convert, there's no point in them existing. So what do UX designers actually do? Well, in short, they define the right approach to a digital product uh, and its creation. So, I want to introduce you to these guys. These guys have got together um, for a meeting and they're going to plan out their new website. They're all really excited. Um, they've seen their competitors launch some new sites over the years and their site has been lagging behind and they're excited to get their new product up and running. They've all had ideas building up in their minds about what the website should look like and it should be. Uh, they get together and the meeting starts and they make some decisions based on some of these factors. Um, they may make decisions about their website based on their own opinions. They may make decisions based on just sort of knee-jerk reactions or cherished notions, the way that they've always done things. Unfortunately for these guys, they are destined to fail because all of these things essentially amount to guesswork. This is absolutely not the way to plan a website at all. But by the time they reach us, we can introduce them to the right kind of process. So analytics tell you what's happening, and user, or user research will tell you why that stuff is happening. And speaking to users is absolutely essential, because if you just look at analytics, you're only really seeing half of the story. And users are kind of the key to knowing your website. Now your users know your website better than anybody else because they use it so as part of a UX process, we have to get to know the users, find out what they think, what they feel, and what they need. Um, but remember, UX is not just about what users want, it has to convert, so it's about business needs too. So we have to get to know 
um, the stakeholders within the business as well. So their needs and their goals for their business. And essentially, UX designers do the hard work to make it simple. So let's talk about some of the techniques that we use to deliver the kind of insight that we need. When we uh, interview people or we observe how they're using websites, the way that we expect them to use a site or what we think they'll do, it, it never really plays out that way. People will find their own little hacks and methods of using sites and products all the time. So we always start with research. And some of the methods that we employ on the screen here, so um, we consistently speak to people over the phone um, and send out surveys. So surveys are great because they allow you to sort of gather quite a lot of um, quantitative information really quickly. It's really useful for us to gather those opinions in and we can take what we learn from them. Another thing we often do is sport, uh, speak to customer support teams. So if you think about customer support teams within a business, their job is to speak to users on the phone like all day, every day. So they hear a lot of complaints, feedback, opinions. So kind of sitting down with them for an hour or two is really, really useful for us because we can kind of learn everything that they know or we'll try and just get all of their knowledge because they're essentially doing user research in a way. Um, but we can run user testing labs as well. So this is where we sit somebody in front of a laptop, ask them to complete some tasks on a website and uh, we can observe them, watch how they use the site and kind of um, make improvements based on the problems that we see them running into. We have a small bit of code that runs on a site that shows us the, where people are clicking on a page. So this is Coast Digital's homepage here. Um, and we can see these kind of hotspots where people are clicking the most. Prime Real Estate at the homepage, the, the top banner, is receiving almost no interaction. So maybe this section needs to work harder. Rather than just kind of guesswork, you know, we can see um, real interaction with a site and make changes based on that. So it's all about evidence-based um, design. The base of research, what we'll do is identify kind of patterns of behavior from different types of users and we'll set those out into what we call personas. So these are internal champions um, where we kind of group patterns of behavior together. We give them a face and a name. So this is an example of a persona. And so we kind of give him a face and a name uh, and then map out kind of the things that, uh, that he's trying to do on the site and why. So when we're working on a project, we will print these out, kind of stick them on the wall and remind ourselves of who we're designing for at all times. And user-centered design, remember, we're always designing with the user in mind. So having these kind of personas is really useful. Uh, there's return on investment. So this is key for businesses, right? So they need conversions um, and they need to see a return on investment. My, for me, the biggest thing is happy customers. So um, it's great that we make businesses money from their, their website in your conversions, that's great. However, for me, I think it's worth going back to this idea of design being problem solving. And with that in mind, anyone can be a designer. One of the things that a lot of designers kind of encounter is this thing called imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is best described as the feeling that you're a fraud. Even if you've been recognized for being amazing at what you do, imposter sy syndrome sufferers constantly worry that they're one mistake away from being found out. So a lot of people think, I'm not a real designer because I didn't go to university and study design. But that's really, that holds so many people back when it really shouldn't. Just coming back to this idea that design is problem solving and not about pretty graphics. So my advice to people who want to get into design or UX design is always just kind of like these basic things. So take notice of the everyday things around you and turn on your design radar. So I've got a really good example here. This is a ticket machine. It's so bad that they actually built a telephone, uh, like a help telephone into the system. Like they knew people were going to struggle with it. Something like this is a really good way to start kind of turning your design radar on. So think about how difficult it was to use and how it might have been simplified or how if you were to redesign this, how would you make it more simple? Or how would you improve it? So learn from bad design. And the other thing 
that I would always say to people who want to get into user experience or design is to read. So these are some examples of books that um, a lot of young designers kind of start with when they want to get into user experience. Um, this one in particular is really, really interesting. Um, it's about the psychology of persuasion. So how you can actually influence people um, through design. Um, and there's quite a few different arms to user experience. So for people who are quite creative and they are good at art and they can draw, um, then visual design is kind of a really good part of user experience. So for people who are really well organized, information architecture could be a good career path for them. For people who are interested in, in psychology, working with people, talking to people, um, then the kind of the research side of things um, could be a really good way for them to get into user experience design. And for people who are really good with numbers, data, very statistical, then the kind of the data analysis side of things uh, could be a really good career path for them. So just before we leave, it's just a recap on kind of the first part of the presentation. So design, it's not about pretty pictures, colors, fonts, graphics. It's about problem solving. And UX design is a balance of user needs and business needs. So research that covers both. Um, testing, measuring, and learning is key to a good user-centered design process. So look, research is a foundation of a good experience. Know what you're designing, who it's for, and test it so that you know that it's gonna work. And the, the results of a good UX process uh, return on investment, I think the business side of things, and happy customers is the, the kind of the user side of things as well. And multi ultimately, good design can change the world and anybody can be a designer. So thank you very much.